What's good, guys? We're back at it again with another video. As you can see from the title today, we have a Gus Yaldin breakdown. Remember what I said in my Trey Green breakdown or even what I said in my EYBL vlog. We will continue to bring the quote-unquote lesser-named players, the players that, again, we're going to come with that video talking about notes that I took from being at Peach Jam and when I went to the UAA circuit the week before, the players that don't have slam and overtime and a whole bunch of cameras on the baseline recording their every move, we're going to start to bring some of those players to the channel because I really feel like there are a lot of players out there that you guys need to see and watching them can really help you guys get better. Gus is one of those players. I initially walked into the gym to watch City Rock, Simeon Wiltshire, who's a lot of you guys' favorite player. We're going to be doing his breakdown in the next couple of days. But I initially walked in to see him, right? And instantly, I remember I'm standing upstairs and within five minutes, I was watching for literally five minutes. I'm like, who is this kid right here? He looked a little familiar, but I'm like, who is this? Like, he can go. Like, he's nice. Obviously, look up his jersey number. He's like, I'm like, Gus. Like, that's that's Gus? That's the Gus bus? That's what they be calling him? I'm like, yeah, he need a breakdown right away, especially for my bigs, because he has footwork ceiling he has parts of his game that as a big i didn't learn until my sophomore junior year of college so i know you guys need to see this let's jump into it okay so gus this is a six seven and six eight big wisconsin commit first thing you notice when you walk into the gym is this dude like really really got size for real uh think more of a kenneth lofton in terms of a build i'm gonna bring that name up again you know remember that but think more kenneth lofton in terms of a build one of the first things i noticed when i started watching the game started watching gus play Remember what I said, he has parts of his game that I didn't learn as a big man until my sophomore or junior year of college. It's his ability to seal, his ability to duck in, and his footwork at this early in age is, is big time, right? Because my freshman year was, my entire freshman year, my coaching staff was harping on me on learning how to seal, how to duck in when I'm sealing. If I don't get the ball after three seconds, don't just let it go. No, continue to seal. If the ball gets swung to the other side of the court, spin around, keep that defender on your back. So you can get the over-the-top pass for an easy layup. And I'm seeing Gus doing this at this age as we start to run it. And I really want you guys to notice two things, right? And I'm actually going to freeze it on the first thing. First thing I want you guys to notice is there are times within the games where Gus's guards are passing him the ball late, right? So as a big, when you have a person sealed, you want it right when you get him. So you can just turn around and get an easy layup. You can see that right here. Gus has him completely sealed. And he finished this game with 35.17 rebounds. So imagine how many points he would have had if his guards would have got it to him at those points, how many easy lays. But as he gets the ball, the second thing I want you guys to notice is his patience on the block. Footwork on the block, he has right shoulder, left shoulder, it doesn't matter who's coming, if the double's coming, he's playing at his own pace. And as a shot blocking big, I can tell you, that's why I said Kenneth Lofton earlier, for these bigger guys, wider guys who understand how to use their shoulders, for a lot of people you might say, oh, they're not athletic, they can't finish above the rim, they can't finish in the paint. These dudes know how to use their shoulders. Even watch right here. He understands that when he goes middle and he turns and he hits you with that shoulder, first of all, by that fifth bump, when he's coming, walking you down, you feel it. You're starting to get tired. But when he turns around and he spins, he's going to hit you with his shoulder and lay it up at the same time. I used to hate when Biggs used to do that because as a shot blocker, I can't get across your body. When you hit me and I'm going backwards, what did I say in the Trey Green breakdown? When you hit me, my arms are coming down. Guess what? It's a foul every time. This is what Gus uses to his advantage. His size, even though he might not be as athletic, he still uses his build to his advantage. So that isn't to say, you know, Gus is only scoring in the paint when he's backing you down. No, he also gets a lot of putbacks like these because he is so skilled. And because he can finish, like I said, right hand or left hand around the rim, he can easily tap it up. Okay, I'm in the right spot. I can just tap it. I don't have to bring the ball down. I can tap it in right hand i can tap it in he does that throughout a lot of games just for being in the right spot if you don't box him out he is still a threat to get rebounds remember what i said he finished this game with 17 rebounds as a six seven center who isn't a crazy vertical athlete but he can still move though i'm about to show you guys but he finished with 17 rebounds as a six seven center that isn't a crazy vertical athlete you can only do that by having an understanding of the game understanding where to be on the floor understanding how to seal because that doesn't only apply to offense because guess what? If I can seal you on the block on offense and you can't get around me, guess what? When I get on defense and the shot goes up, when I box you out, you're not going anywhere, which is part of the reason why you finish with, like I said, 17 of them things. Like I just said, Gus isn't a crazy vertical athlete, but he can still move extremely well. And part of the reason why I named Kenneth Lofton Jr., you know, I don't know if you guys seen what he's recently been doing in summer league, killing as a 6'7", you know what I'm saying, bigger guy, but also extremely nimble, can move extremely well. Gus is the same way. I want you guys to watch this. To be a player at his size, to move like this, 
to be able to get the ball in trail situations and put it down on the floor and finish with your inside hand, that's tough. Or to also get it, get downhill, get a little bit by your defender and finish with a floater right over him. As a, again, as a 6'7", not crazy vertical athlete, this is just showing how skilled he is. To get a steal and go coast to coast, spin, stay on balance and spin and finish in the paint. Again, this is a player who you're not only going to be able to utilize on the block, but like I just said, you can put him in trail situations and let him create out of that. You can put him in pick and pops on a clear side and let him play one-on-one -on -one against a mismatch because he is a mismatch problem. You can put him up against slow-footed bigs. He's going to be able to get around him. You put him up against smaller guys, he's easily going to be able to back him down and get to the block. And we already saw he got the moves. He got the post work. That's easy buckets. You can put him at the high post, let him face up or at either elbow and work out because he can not only create shots for himself, I'm about to show you, he can also create shots for his teammates because he has a great feel for the game. Part of the reason why he can put it down and why people respect him on the perimeter is because he can also knock down that open three. He only made this one this game, but he took like three or four. There isn't much hesitation. If he's open, he will take that three and just judging by his form and judging by his numbers, he can knock it down and he's only going to get better at it. But I also wanted to show you guys his ability to pass a little too. Like not only out of a double team out of the block, because I saw a little bit of that. I don't know why, you know, he wasn't double team more, especially when he was getting towards that 35 piece. But just his ability as we start to run this for him to get the rebound and throw great outlet passes to his teammates for easy layups, because in this game, City Rocks was down for a majority of the game. They were down by 13 in the fourth at some point, right? And he was a catalyst because he was the reason they got a lot of easy buckets, a lot of easy runouts. As you can see, he's literally just getting off the glass, throwing great outlet passes to his teammates. I also want to show you guys this, Gus taking a charge. Honestly, I haven't seen too many players take charges in Peach Jam, which doesn't make sense because that actually is one of the things that catches a coach's eye other than scoring you know scoring isn't the most important thing I mean, this kind of solidified for me in my mind that Gus Yaldin is always going to make the right play necessary to win the game okay if I need to take a charge here I'll do it if you need me to score on the block take my time with patience I can do that you need to put me in a pick and pop in an isolation on a clear side and work out against a big I can do that you need me to knock down an open three I can do that you need me okay after I hit one three to pump fake and put it down and be able to finish in traffic even though I'm not dunking on everybody I can do that. If you need me to make the right pass, get the rebound and throw a throw ahead. If you need me to get it at the high post and find the open man when I face up, he can do all these things. So again, I'm going to continue to bring some of these players that I feel like you guys need to see because there are a lot of guys out there that might not get all the media attention. They might not get all the media hype, but they can hoop, hoop. Gus Yaldin had 35 and 17 in this game. He's averaging over 18 so far throughout Peach Jam. I think 18 and like seven or eight, something like that playing at an extremely high level and again we're going to keep coming with these players i appreciate you guys watching remember if you want the one-on-one -on -one evaluations or the subscriber breakdowns that go on the channel just like this hit my website in the description also if you have any questions for me need any advice from me hit my link for noodle also in the description i appreciate you guys watching follow me on instagram twitter tiktok i'm gonna see you guys next time in the next video